All right, thanks for joining in. So this week, the team is presenting some graphics, some of them infographics, um, more or less based on what Caroline, what they learned this week from a class with Caroline Beaven. And Mark's going to kick us off and talk a little bit about that. OK. <laughs> Yeah, hi everyone. My name's Mark. <coughs> so this week we had um, a speaker come in, Caroline Eden, and she was talking to us about infographics and how to design and think about putting your infographics together. So a few concepts that she mentioned were, okay, what is our aim? So what is the aim of the infographic? Um, who's the audience and, and what data do we have? So in terms of aim, she was really, uh, a few things she mentioned was around, is the aim to inform people? Um, is it to explain something to people? Maybe to reassure um, the audience about something? Or possibly to scare people? So if it's a health um, outbreak of something or other, it might actually to be to scare people, have them take an action. So the next one was around audience. So who are we talking to? Is it ex internal to this company? Is it internal people in the company? Or is it external, like the general public? Uh, could it be adults, could it be children, um, customers or staff? So just to think about who's the actual audience of the infographic and who are we communicating to? And then data was really around, okay, what data do we have? Is it um, a small amount of data, key large figures, or is it large data sets? So that's really just a quick intro on that. So then we have to all put together um, an infographic. So the one I worked on here, so we all were given um, or had to pick a charity. And for those in the room, you can see some list of charities on the board there. So the one I picked was <clears throat> for the gorilla organization. I'd like to know why you picked the gorillas. I just thought it was kind of fun. Oh, OK. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. My thing is. So the gorilla organization oh, hold is. Hold on a second. <laughs> I can't hear anything. Okay, interesting. It's connected, my lady. Um, now, lady, is that better? Hello, no, lady, is that better? Thank you. All right, go ahead, Mark. Yeah, so the, the gorilla organization is a London-based charity. They work on conservation of um, gorilla population in um, a number of ca uh, countries across Africa. So um, just pulled some, some basic stats from uh, their site in terms of numbers of different types of gorillas um, and the different countries where, where they're in. I didn't have the populations per country, so I couldn't really kind of format that, but you just get an idea of where they are at least. Um, and then this uh, next look, graphic here shows, the green dots show which countries each of the different types of gorillas are in. So you've got Cross River Gorilla is in Cameroon and Nigeria. The Eastern Lowland Gorilla is just in the uh, Democratic uh, DRC and so on. And then a couple of kind of large um, key numbers here. So 70% live in protected areas. 33% die from Ebola and 5% oh, die geez, from wow. poaching. Um, and then looked at different ways that you can help. So on the site, there's a whole host of different kind of donation options. Some of them are monthly. Some of them are these much larger, larger figures. They call them um, uh, legacy, legacy donations. So if you want to leave something in a will, you can leave a much larger amount. Um, but it starts from three pounds upwards, right? So there's kind of a whole menu of, of different things you can do there. Um, and then you just have a link out to, to their site, so you can get a, if you want more information, you can go and see what they do and all that kind of stuff, have their projects on there, uh, et cetera. So that's pretty much it. All right. Okay. I really like <coughs> your consistency with the colors here. Uh, mm -hmm. And just kind of the, you know, I, I think you did a nice job of starting with a summary and then kind of adding detail as, as you go down and finishing with a conclusion for how you can help. So 
I think that really um, works well with the stuff that Caroline was teaching us. So that's good. Cool. Any other feedback? Nice. Yeah, Maybe some text here and there just to sort of explain your story. So if yeah. someone's just looking mm -hmm. at it, they might just think, well, what are you trying to tell me? Whereas if you put like text in between or something yeah. like that, just a bit of description. Yeah, That's maybe some of the projects they work on, that kind of stuff. Yeah. That's a good idea. <clears throat> it might just be because I'm sitting far away, but I think like some of the smaller text can also just get a bigger. Uh, yeah, like that. So, so if you kind of headline titles and your headline thing is a really nice and clear to read, like yeah. you read them at a glance, but then let's say it's, it's many this, great, great species, and then yeah, just mm. trying to Around here. read the smaller names. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, but, the general, like the big text numbers, they're really strong, especially with like the right. number, side of the page, like that. Okay, cool. Well, yeah, that's good. I like how you picked out three three kind of key metrics there that really help reinforce what you're trying to do. Yeah. Yeah, there, there weren't a whole lot of metrics on the side, actually, so yeah, it kind of worked. I, I would have actually assumed that die from poaching was a lot higher. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah that, so it's, I don't know, that could have been time box when there was a particular sure. butter outbreak. So. Yeah. Yeah, not too sure. sure. But you got it from their their website. Yeah. No, I mean the dying from poaching. I would have thought would be high generally. A lot higher, yeah. Yeah, right. How did you get your data? Did you just go through the website to find it, or yeah, just on different. Data? Yeah, and then just put it into Excel and just did a yeah, just imported that into Tableau basically. I went to a couple of other sites as well <laughs> to see if they get some pull some other information from their own site. And did you wear the green shirt today on purpose? Or? <laughs> Didn't think about that actually, but yeah. <laughs> All right, good job. Next up is Neil. Hello, I'm Neil. Uh, my charity was Battersea Dogs and Cats Home. Um, I chose Battersea because um, I've always had adopted pets. I've never had a like a kitten or a puppy. I've always gone to a rescue centre to get an animal. So it was kind of a topic that suited me. Plus, I like the work that they do. Very good, very good charity. Um, so my initial aim was to uh, promote the kind of good work that they're doing and also highlight that possibly more could be done to kind of a, kind of a sales pitch to encourage donations to them. Um, the audience I was kind of targeting, obviously this is going up in Tableau Public, so I wanted it to be an infographic but still be kind of analytical so people could do, do a bit more exploring in it rather than just a typical flat um, infographic that you come across most times. Um, the sketch on the right, right um, that was just uh, before it, seeing any data, those were just some kind of initial ideas that I put down. It's one of the techniques that Caroline showed us was just to, before you see anything, just have a go at scribbling some thoughts down, some pictures, to give you a sense of where you're going. Um, so then I went online and I kind of put together some mood boards of other infographics that I liked. <laughs> just a general search, just didn't really... Um, didn't have anything specific. I just collected things that caught so, my so eye. It didn't necessarily have to be about dogs and cats. No, no, it was just things that caught my eye, things that stood out, um, and then kind of get that sense of why they stood out so much and kind of outside. Then I did refine my search more to these ones were more about kind of animal infographics. Um, and this one here is actually Battersea's own infographic. Okay. What's, what's attractive? I think they were the ones that stood out when I did a Google image search. They were very colourful. Yeah, colour, layout, shape, that sort of thing. Um, so you weren't necessarily looking for a graphic inspiration, but it was more like what sort of captured your attention. Yeah, when you look at a screen of lots of these, which were the ones that stood out um, in an attempt to try and kind of understand that. I'm not sure I'd like, 
it worked for in my infographic, but that was the kind of aim I was going First to do. job of an infographic is to actually have you look at it. Yes, yeah, to make it eye catching so you'll actually um, look at it. Um, so this was yeah, so this was Battersea's own infographic that they put together, um, which then actually led me on to this, which is their annual report that they do every year. And that was a kind of nugget of information. They had absolutely tons and tons of information, really interesting stories, really good facts and figures about the about Batsu and what they do, um, which actually led me to kind of pivot my idea. So going back to the aim, um, there was so much interesting information in there, I decided that that was going to be my focus. And again, kind of looking at the influence from these ones, I actually went to more towards the infographic rather than the kind of analytical piece of work. Um, so it's just part of your iterating process then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just kind of my initial thoughts. I didn't think we were going to work with the data I had, so sure. I just decided to, to change. Um, so the next thing, I went through that um, annual report and I just picked out all the information that I thought was really interesting and just kind of chucked them down on a bit of paper. Then I've kind of laid them out in a, a storyboard. So again, one of the techniques Caroline was kind of talking about was just chuck everything on the paper and just start arranging it. She was um, she was explaining to try and get a kind of layout going. So you'd have your header here, things like that. That didn't really work for me. So I just went for a kind of linear story, that kind okay. of story that you want. So that's tell. when in old project management style is a work, break, work breakdown structure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Just a simple story, just a kind of progression through the through the biz, um, and then that led me to my final my final dashboard, which is this. So yeah, pretty pretty flat. There's not much kind of exploring. I was kind of just I wanted as the infographic style was just kind of picking out those big um, those big headline things. That might draw people in, might make it interesting. You tweeted this earlier because I've seen this. I did. Yeah, I yeah, did. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It caught my attention. <laughs> good, <laughs> good. So, so then, can you uh, scroll back to the time? Yeah, sure. Yeah. yeah. Let's go through it too quick. Sorry. So oh, yeah, I, I assumed it was sorry because I didn't realise it was. I just scrolling down through Twitter. I didn't realise that, that that caught my attention. So cool. So it worked. It worked. <laughs> kind of. Yeah. I, I, I assumed That's it was actually. I assumed it was a real one from there. Oh right, brilliant. I've had um, a couple of um, people contacting me from Batsu just saying, great, thanks for doing this. Really Get our awesome. logo off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah that's it. Yeah. You're, you're infringing our copyright. <laughs> Take it off. Again, you intrigued me because the facts were increasing, the constant were increasing. Yeah, again, so the, those, are the, those are the kind of really interesting things that uh, I found. Is the scale the same? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, actually, I think they're slightly off. I think I tweeted just so I could get them looking good okay. on the page. Again, there's not a lot of real estate available when you're doing infographic and you're trying to cram so much um, information. So you, you've struck the first law of the infographic system, the truth isn't necessarily. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so someone has someone suggested um, um, getting rid of the include zero on the on the charts, then that made the lines massive. It was yeah. given the wrong I think kind it's, of. I like what you do. Yeah, that. yeah. Um, that was that. I, I quite like these colours that I that I've got here. Those were when you actually click on the bar in Tableau. That was the default colour that it turns the bars to. So I just just screen pick grab those colours. Oh, okay. okay. Again, that that annual report had all of the colours in it. it. You know, it was like their brand guideline guidelines all contained in one document. So I just grabbed all the colours from the report. Okay. Um, Can I ask a question? So what does mean cared for? Is this the one that uh, were at the at the Battersea or the one who were with home or cared is... cared for means that they have looked after them in the uh, Battersea at some point, whether it be for a day or hundred days. So they've been around since eighteen sixty. Yep. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, That's and they've amazing. killed three million dogs and cats in that time, which is amazing. Um, One thing I would potentially do then, moving on from Natasha, is switch your logo and the top. Okay, to make down. that the head. So then you put um, the speech and then you put at, then back to see that the logo would be there. So right. then it says at back to see. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. So it just links the, links yeah. the two. 
Um, yeah, so that was interesting. Uh, this is another interesting point. They had a, uh, a Sphinx cat come in this year. Um, <laughs> those are really weird, odd-looking cats. <laughs> but, um, uh, then there's just some kind of general stats. Um, and then uh, I was reading this story about this dog biscuit. So whilst the average for a dog is 30 days and the cat average for a cat is 22 days, Biscuit was with them for 689 days before he was rehomed. And that was kind of like, I've got to add that in somewhere. It's <laughs> such, a, such a kind of really interesting story that no, he couldn't get rehomed. Um, was that an outlier? Yeah, I, 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 you know, I don't have the data on all of the, the animals that they put in, but they, hi they highlighted it in their report. So yeah. it must be a, you know, it must be a pretty unique event. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and they then, could have been pets that have been there longer, but maybe they haven't been adopted yet. Yeah, something. yeah, exactly. Yeah, there could be others there that haven't been adopted. Yeah. Um, and then just going down, just a few more kind of interesting stats. So like they raised thirty-one million pounds this year. Well, sorry, two, this is two thousand fifteen. This data um, spent thirty-seven thousand pounds a day on animal on animal wow. welfare. They raised thirty-one million in one year. Yeah, that's through donations and legacies. That's, that's crazy. So I think my understanding is the legacies, they might not actually be collecting them now. They might be secured in wills for right, future right, right. years. Sure. And that was it. Um, one thing I was really proud of, actually, with this is that text is dynamic. So I can change the number in the spreadsheet in the background. And that updates it, that text to the... To the it was quite a, took quite a while to write the, the formula <laughs> to do it, but I was like, you know, committed. You just wrote 31 million, million formulas. Okay, yeah. <laughs> I just I wrote a case, um, and it just splits the number up into, it divides it by a million, looks at the first two numbers, and makes a decision. So if it's, okay. if right. it's greater than one, it does like 20. Right. And then so that's the second one. Is that like a, like a hundred? No, 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 no. Like, I'll do you have to have it one, then the way it one? No. So if you, if I, I'll, show, I'll show you. So, the num, so give me a number between twenty and ninety-nine. Seventy-four. Seventy-four. Okay, that's so if I go back to, so that's the. Uh, just refresh that. Oh, we didn't save the spreadsheet. Uh, there you go. So that's update 74. Okay, so the. So is that is that formula in Tableau? Yeah. So it's running at runtime. Yeah. You know, so it's a case. So it just looks at. Yeah. If it's got one at the start, then it's going to be one of those options. Else, if it's gone. Control, <laughs> control, control, and then like scroll. scroll. Oh, okay. So yeah, so that does. If it's got one at the start, then it's going to be ten to nineteen. Else, if it's greater than one. So who's going to raise more than one million? <laughs> yeah, so then it, and then it splits up into the takes the left part of the number, gives it the twenty, thirty, forty. And takes the right part of the number and moves it one to one. I was trying to make it as updatable as possible. So if I got 2016's data, yeah. I could update the spreadsheet and it would really. Isn't there a formal in the spreadsheet that does this automatically? Could have done. But I decided to do it in Tableau instead. Yeah, so I, I would have had to write. I would have had to. I would have had to write the same conditions in the same formula in Excel. But you could just link to the like sort of the cell formula. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I decided to do it in Tableau and said I thought it might be a good good practice thing to do. Yeah. Uh, Did you donate now but go to the donate button? It does, yeah. So it was, uh, it's a So and the lady said she likes the layout, but the Sphinx logo doesn't fit in the color scheme. Nice job highlighting some interesting bits and not just showing trends and aggregates. Yeah, the Sphinx color doesn't match, but I think it stands out really well on the screen. It really highlights that thing. Plus, it looks like the Sphinx in Egypt. 
<laughs> like with the color, the sand color, the sandstone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A picture of a snake cat would not be as impressive. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I, it was kind of an interesting thing, so I thought, why not make an interesting point of it? Yeah. Well, and just yeah, having a static. And maybe it'd make it a little bit smaller so you can still see the bars. Ah, uh, see that again, there was a kind of design choice that I made to actually overlap the bars mm -hmm. above it. So what I was... Um, right. Shut down! Yeah. <laughs> <All right. laughs> I was... I've hardly floated any items on this, so this is all um, like locked up in position with uh, tiled grass. So like all of these things, they're, they're actually in worksheets and I've used... Like, must have like a million um, containers in there. No, not that many, I don't think. Right, just... You can say yeah, yeah. Like yeah. But it's kind of. I don't know why tool tips come in there, but um, yeah. So like all these positions, they're all like controlled by formulas, so I could get the alignments mm. right. And That's good. Yeah. yeah. I thought because I wasn't doing so much kind of graph work, I'd spend more time thinking about positions and layouts. And I think one thing I would say about the colors is when. Because it's quite a dark color, the yeah. black on it isn't a good a good contrast. No, it's all tough to read. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I, I get us some feedback I don't know. Some of these dark gray words are quite yeah. hard to read. Again, on when you're looking on, on the screen, that like, tablet like, vessel, yeah. they look fine. They sound really well. Yeah. As soon as you publish it, like as soon as I published, I had all the layout looking really awesome on my screen. Published it to um, Tabo Public, and it all went out. It was horrible. I had to spend another hour or two just rejigging stuff. So even on my, like all, all of this, all of this text has, is cut off here. So that's the only way I could get it to look right on mm. the server. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's like the padding. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Padding yeah. 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 Like this text looks nothing like that when you actually publish it. Right. That's interesting. What's all those crossy things? Yeah, that's about? exactly, that's what I'm saying. So I've had to shrink uh, to get it to look right on the tablet pub fit. Yeah. Well, what was it? Oh, it was so yeah, if, you get, if I go oh, back okay. to it, so that's what it looks like on my screen. Same as the Excel with the cover. And that's what yeah. it looks like when I published it. So a completely different view. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, it's just really annoying. Yeah, Probably, yeah, yeah. And then web rendering. And that's it. Yeah, very good. Well done. Waiting for you. Yeah. Oh, I need to download. Just hit download. It's quick. Is it, is it sending you in again? Let's get you as presenter now. Yep. Can you see this? Yep. So from Natasha, uh, the charity I picked was uh, Missing People, so there's the website. So the reason I picked this charity was because um, all the charities with animals were gone pretty quick. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, um, um, yeah, so I started to look at others and um, I found the other charities were quite well known and this is the charity I never heard about and I think that it's um, kind of an interesting topic. Uh, they're actually missing people in the UK. They're the only one charity which deals with uh, missing people. And uh, what I particularly liked is um, that uh, here they say that they're not just um, helping to find someone. They provide support if you are missing, if you think of uh, like of going 
to run away uh, or just support networks. So there is different um, services they provided and um, I just wanted to, with my project, to raise awareness of the charity. Uh, so I made the infographic, um, uh, so this is like this. Um, and um, it focuses on the charity itself. It's a helpline as their main point of contact uh, if uh, you need any help. And um, so while I started to look at the, the charity numbers, there were some statistics for the last year. And um, another interesting thing is that their statistic and the statistics from the police are different because not every missing person is reported. And uh, I think police not reports everyone who's probably missing less than some uh, 24 or 84 hours like this. So their data is different. Uh, and uh, like this uh, charity tries to capture every, every incident of uh, missing people. So according to them, uh, around 250,000 people go missing every year in the UK. And 60% of, of the, all the reported incidents are happens with children. Um, so looking again at this, I was uh, interested to see that there is a breakdown for why people go missing. Uh, because like I automatically assume that this is some something like criminal something happened to a person mm -hmm. goes missing but actually there is a uh, uh, more reasons to this so again the data does not add up to the 250,000 because this is again from the police reports and not all cases has uh, the reason sometimes it's just like unknown or other, so they didn't collect this data. But based on the data that they collect, 22% uh, <coughs> of incidents, they happen because of um, mental health and anxiety. They also had in the data the split uh, between the age groups. So uh, children, um, I grouped them into four groups, Ch children I think it's about from 0 to 11, teens is from 12 to 18, adults is um, from 20s to, I think, late 50s, and seniors is 65 and above, something like that. So um, here you, like, you can see the list uh, of all different reasons, and um, the main reason um, highlighted uh, for, the, for each age group, there is a uh, it is a big circle, you can see the reason which is the most common. Like, for example, uh, the most reason to go missing for children who are below 11 or 12 is because of school. There's some school reasons. Uh, as they grow up and become a teens, it becomes a relationship problem. <laughs> um, well, uh, so most adults miss uh, go missing because of mental health problem and uh, for seniors here is uh, dementia. Um, so there is not a lot of other reasons which uh, like it's pretty explorable here and, uh, and then just the context for the charity itself. Uh, thank you. <laughs> I really like um, the big, the, so Lauren, this is kind of going back to some of the feedback that you gave to Mark about adding the yeah, text yeah. in with mm -hmm. the numbers, right? Yeah. So this does, uh, see how she's kind of incorporated that in, yeah. in, into it. So um, it gives really good context for the numbers. Um, I really love the dot plot. I think the dot plot is really fantastic. Quick question on the dot plot. Did you try to do an independent axis for each category? Yeah, I think that was one, one of the, Common questions about this, um, um, what is called dot plot. Um, so I think when everything is in, in in one, it's kind of messy. If you start to become too different, then like the scale is off. Here you again you can compare the same group to so each other. So you can other. also compare across and down right, if yeah, you keep right. the axes this way. Okay. Whereas if you if she makes them independent, then you know, the, this this one for school would be all the way on the right, yeah. but then that makes it look like it's higher than those two, yeah, than those three. Right. So, yeah. And at first she built it with them all in one 
one dot plot, but it was like super messy because there was tons of overlapping <laughs> and stuff. So to me, it looks much more organized this yeah, way. Yeah, I just I you was could just probably wondering. lose the axis at the top um, and put in a label against the big, the larger ones and smaller ones so that you knew the range. Um, so um, so you can meet the numbers at the top. Oh, you mean just show zero to eight or just get rid of it? Just lose the the the, the axis. Just remove uh, this completely. Yeah, and just have a label on the um, on the larger on the you know on the larger dots to show what size uh, they are. They may not fit though. That's the only problem. Yeah, yeah. Might, yeah. Might so, so she could put label in zero and one at eight thousand. Going to say that no. exclude the middle. Yeah, yeah. break that. Yeah. So we get yeah. the minor text. Just take the label. Like another thing that I would improve is probably remove zeros because somewhere here, like um, there is no children that go missing for gang-related reasons, and uh, I would remove zeros. But for some reason, when I started to do this at the end, it removed uh, the hole with the line itself, and I just wanted to remove just the dot. Uh, so I just leave it because uh, I think yeah. zeros as well, zeros and very small numbers, they're confusing a bit. Sure. Yeah. So 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 then it would only show the dots where there was where there was missing, yeah. Okay. yeah. yeah but it went to preserve the line as yeah. well. So yeah, that makes sense. Um, yeah. Could you you could have um, you could have colored them clear or white? Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. You could have, you could have done that. Yeah. The, the what? Sorry, the white. We, she, you could have added a third color. Uh huh. So that the ones that are zeros are you make them white. Oh yeah, that's an interesting one. Yeah. Or like a light shade of pink. Something, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, or or you could write a you could <coughs> write a calculation that returns either that you're either the biggest, you're a zero, or you're something else, mm -hmm. and put that on a because I think right now you have that as discrete, correct, for the sizing. It's either it's like a boolean, right? Yeah, it's like max and maximum. Yeah, so and max. if you if you'd slightly change the calculation where a zero came up as yeah. one of the options, then, then you could just hide them, oh, and yeah. then it would make the line disappear. Yeah. So. All right. You can also do that with size zero, just get really small zero. Yeah. 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 So you know how you adjusted the scale? You had the the, the uh, Yep. So if you had zero in there as well, you could have just made zero like super tiny. Or something. No, but no, but, no, but here is the same work. size because they are all the same size. Only yeah. the big one. Uh, the maximum one, a big one. Yeah, we'd have to do it through a different calculation. <laughs> we'd have to do a calculation to make it null. If zero, then null. Yeah, then, but then her line would disappear. No, what's the what's the line? Is that not? Is it oh, no, you, you, Yeah, but you could actually duplicate your measure. Right, there's tons of options. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But it's okay. It's fine. Yeah. 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 So it's good. good. Very good. Nice work. Right. Thank you. Well done. Great minimal use of color on that one as well. It was on purpose. Everyone I usually thought it was too much pink, but then I saw the logo oh. and I was like, oh, yeah. okay, that's all. Actually, <laughs> everyone likes the big, big numbers. Man. There seems to be a theme between the colors you like and the skin on your laptop as well. <laughs> and the nails. Nails as well as that's that. Actually uh, how, that's uh, actually uh, how she picked the charity. <laughs> <laughs> and don't care about what it's for, it's just it's pink. What do I need to do? Let me see. Sorry. Um, I need to. Make that one just being just I'm going off. No, not laughing. I didn't know that. You want this? It's close enough. I didn't know you were that. Because you were usually that. Is this you doing your best right now? Yeah. 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 Yeah
Um, I've, the uh, charity I've chosen is WaterAid. They, they do really good work, which I wanted to support and raise awareness for. And um, I had a quick look at their website to start off with, and it turned out to be a good choice. They've got lots of statistics on their website. Um, they've, they've got good branding, so I tried to keep my, um, my infographic in line with their brand colors and general style. Um, they even have, uh, so like that, that's what I mean, they've got kind of infographic -y statistics to highlight numbers throughout their website. Um, they even have a page for statistics, which was quite interesting. And that was one of basically the, the basis for, for the infographic as well that I ended up creating. I just chose some key statistics from the site um, that I thought would, would work well. Um, for those who don't know, WaterAid is a, uh, it's a British charity that operates globally with local partners to um, provide water and sanitation access around the world. Um, yeah. So here's the videos. And I try to keep it to one page and one screen. Um, and that's, and, so what was your what was your reasoning behind that? Because the others have gone for a you know a traditional portrait scrolling format. Why did why did you go for landscape screen? So you just get the need one, not having to scroll around or you know. yeah. And I was thinking that um, the the for presenting on Tableau Public or on Twitter that it it was just a, a good format. You could see everything in in one, um, one in one shot. Yeah, yeah. one screen. Um, got a few numbers and, and graphics and colors, and again, tried to keep it um, relatively simple in terms of color scheme. That's toilet logo. Yes. Because <laughs> <laughs> half, half the people in the world um, who live in rural areas don't have access to a toilet. Wow, wow, that's crazy. And um, globe, that's like globally, you know, 7 billion people, whatever, and um, 19% of people who live in urban areas. I like your use of different kind of shades of blue in this. I think it works pretty well. Is this kind of to be read in three sections, the left, the middle, and the right? Um, they're, they're all quite standalone, so okay. it's kind of... I might put a little more white space between them then, like okay. some blank, some I, blank I objects in between them. I did consider whether to put like I've seen some infographics have like dotted lines as borders yeah, or yeah. or something. I feel like they're yeah. kind of they're thing. all sort of compressed a bit. Yeah. Okay. And maybe make it not so square as well. That, no, I meant like so that you can <laughs> so you kind of like jagger them about a bit. So like use floating containers like to put like more. Oh, that's all awesome. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know because the middle looks wider than the other. Yeah. Well, that's because of map, probably, because the map yeah, on the yeah, scale yeah. right then. Yeah. The map and the chart, and I, I did think about making it um, basically a one two one, so that would be twice as wide, but that that was a bit too wide, so it looks. So it's more like it's more like a quarter, or a half, and a quarter. Yeah. But, you know, it's still kind of there. It's close to that. Yeah. I think it looks good. Feels cool. like it should be like a leaflet by. Yeah. 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 It does. Yeah. It does. Yeah. <laughs> It's good. Again, I like the nice use of big numbers and, and kind of using the the, um, the color of the text to highlight the kind of the important things to, to read, you know, kind of the highlighting. Anything I'd, I'd say is if you've got your numbers on your bar chart, you don't need your axis there as well. So if you've, got your, you've got the numbers at the top, you can take away the axis for the same thing. Uh, oh, that's a good point, the, uh, yeah. Yeah, you see yeah, it's really nice. back there. 
So the sectioning, um, you know, maybe putting lines in between. Or I, I think even I would start with white space before I put lines in there to, to kind of buffer the sections. Yeah. Again, uh, I think I was trying to fit quite a lot of like, of stuff into a small sure. space. Yeah. 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 It's good. Use yeah. of the pie there is probably uh, correct use of pie. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, because it's only two. So very easy to read. Yeah, very yeah. easy, and you are trying to show something of a whole. Yeah. Um, so yeah. But actually, the the toilet logo in there really actually <laughs> does add to it. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, it's good. So did you end up floating all of this? Uh, I think it's a mix of Todd and floating. Okay. Be careful when you publish it. Yeah, I know. I haven't yeah. done that yet. <laughs> <laughs> and oh yeah, that's the other thing. Um, I. I had trouble finding a kind of donate now link to make it clickable through. That the, their website had a donate now, but it goes through to enter your bank details here for a regular donation and whatever. So um, I thought if anyone wants more information, I just put their their just website, the website yeah. and their Twitter. Yeah, it's good. Yeah, well done. Good, good job. Thank you. There you go. It's just got a slight delay. Okay. Good afternoon. Um, I chose the RSPCA as my charity, um, the Royal Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Um, I just used it basically as an opportunity to, to sort of use images and icons and get the learn how to use containers. Um, <clears throat> And also to follow the principles that Caroline told us about in a, when she came in to talk about infographics last week. So um, one of the things she said was um, to use clear markers to divide sections. So I actually just used um, uh, underscore, like an underlined underscore as my markers. But I think, <laughs> so I think like Neil uses filled, filled, filled text objects, boxes. filled text boxes. I don't know. How do you do it? Uh, sometimes I do fill text boxes. Sometimes I do. I have an. In, I have like a series of images that are just horizontal lines. Yeah. I find that the text boxes actually probably work best. It yeah, doesn't really matter. Is, if you get fifteen shown on different size screens, the lines can mess up on different sides. No, they don't go across the whole. If page they're images. Or, yeah. Or you yeah, have to do image, yeah. two, two, two rows appear. Yeah. So <clears> best stay away from the lines. To be honest, and yeah. use a filled box. Filled box. Oh, you mean with his, because he used uh, text, you mean? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, So if you have to shrink this, then your text would wrap. Right. Would be the issue. Or exactly. if it gets yeah. wider, you worry about big being. Right, the awesome. lines won't. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Right. okay. So well, that's one thing I've learned anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it's quite minimalist as well. So uh, Caroline emphasized using, a, you know, using your white space not to make it. But the worst things we saw when she, when she came in was, you know, the worst infographics she showed were the ones that looked too cluttered, basically. Um, the information that I got was just from a 2015 report that they put out. Um, they haven't got a 2016 report yet. But um, it gives them, it just gave a few numbers about, um, so how many cruelty investigations they've had, how many cats and dogs they've rescued. Um, I quite like, um, I quite like using uh, the icons as animals to, um, I can use, I've used a highlight action, I mean it doesn't really add much, but it helps me <laughs> yeah. uh, learn how to use that kind of thing. Um, but I quite like using the overlapping icons to, um, as a sort of legend. Yeah, um, I you think that works well. I like, but, I like having the icons there. Yeah. More, more information in the talk tip, I've just added how many million cat owners there are in the UK, just, just for fun really. Yeah. Um, and then the more, the more salient points that you like, find on their website, some statistics that I found quite interesting. I thought I'd put 
but afterwards. Um, unfortunately, their RSPCA for sure doesn't fit in with my color scheme that I've chosen, but <laughs> they'll have to change that. <laughs> um, but uh, and the, the color scheme that I I got is, is really uh, good. If pr probably the more experienced people have already done this, but if you open up your preferences, you can put you can make your own um, color scheme color palette. It's quite a neat trick. So you can pull the colors it's from easier to reuse them. Yeah. yeah, it's really good. Like you think it's not worth it, you can just color pick every time. But if you actually have a color palette, it makes life a lot quicker. It's a really neat way of, of doing things. I recommend we can, it. We'll do that. Yeah. Next week. And uh, I got the got the color scheme from their website, which is you know just at the bottom. Yeah, and, most, uh, most companies will have their own set. Yeah. We, we have one. Luckily, we had a guy who build our palette that we then built into our Tableau build and put on every sheet. So. Okay, so it comes pre installed. Pre installed on the sheet at the moment. Right. right. With the color, the full color that's been doing. That's three weeks after they start. Is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Sasha to build that first time. Uh, but, <laughs> no, I didn't want to get the computer. Oh yeah, they don't get a computer straight away. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, but if you if you turn up at a placement and they have they've got a color scheme that they haven't put in Tableau, then yeah. So we'll show we'll we'll go through and do that on, on Monday. They can be really useful, but they can be an absolute pain as well. If a client says it's your color scheme. Mm -hmm. And if it's either crap or if it's <laughs> it <laughs> reduces your options when you're creating your business and yeah. creates an app. Yeah, sometimes pain. when I see things like that, I might pick out one of the colors of the clients that I like and then use different the shades of that color. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right. So, so what we'll do on Monday, since we have a project on Monday, we'll so pick out their colors and we'll build their color palette. Yeah. Okay. So what's interesting is when they when we rolled out Tableau properly about uh, two and a half years ago. Um, we had a much, uh, a much better color palette than we do now. It's called branding, which I changed the colors slightly and actually reduced the number of colors that you can use. Um, it's, still a lot. it's still enough, though. It's still enough. Yeah. And there's a couple of okay, cool colors that we can use. I find myself using the tape colors a bit on top of. Yeah, well. yeah, yeah. So because if, if it is a document that goes out, branding, mm -hmm. branding are all over it. Yeah. Yeah. I've just tried an angry well. yeah. Alright, thanks so very much. Some, some, uh, some, <coughs> some feedback from Sorry? Nalidi. Uh, yeah, yeah, Teal. That. Yeah. So Nalidi said she likes the colors and the way you use the icons as <laughs> a legend. Um, can you scroll up to your bar chart section? So I think she's finding the design a bit confusing. The scales are the same, right? So yeah, for the. Third one, because this line. has the gap in the middle. Yeah. Is that? Yeah, maybe yeah it's maybe different. <coughs> but it, it was already a lot of scrolling, so I kind of wanted to yeah. put all this yeah. information in a short, you know, more together. But um, well, the first two are scaled, right? They're yeah. the same. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. These aren't related. These are like separate. So you're getting the hook off the stage. <laughs> it looks like. It looks like <laughs> yes, this is my cue. I think too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well done. Good Thanks. Time. Got tired of you. <laughs> but it was, what was confusing the lady on yours was because this one, these three all work well because they're all come from the left, but then all suddenly you've got this one that comes from the right. So it might have been better to have that one down below as well or something. I did like the amount of white space you used to put. I think yeah. it kind of helps the whole infographic. Really Cleans it up a bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Space is good. There's sometimes the temptation with something that says it's a one drop space. Or if it was put them, maybe um, um, vertical spectrum bars or something. Yeah, yeah that would yeah. change the orientation. So it's, it's yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so my name is Victoria, and I've chose WWF um, mainly because I like not their logo. Not the logo. Not the name anymore. Yes, so as I mentioned, I mainly chose it because I like their logo, and I thought immediately uh, when drawing my grid that uh, it would it will work well with black and white, <laughs> and that's what I prefer. 
Um, yes, yeah, so according to what Caroline taught us, I have uh, put some ideas uh, into the grid and then went on to browsing their website. So how did you find the process of drawing on the grid? Did you find it helped you kind of gather your thoughts? Yes, definitely. Uh, uh, yeah, so I have some ideas for success, <laughs> as you can tell, before I found any data. So, yeah, and then I, of course, went on to adjust this grid as I was working um, further. What's the main purpose of the grid? Is it to just to yeah, try so and then compartmentize what your thoughts are, so you yeah. think about something and then you move on to something else? <laughs> Uh, it's just no. a really quick way of getting just quick ideas now. You don't spend too long. You did try. You might be very answer. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just the purpose of it is mainly to get rid of the ideas that you think will work, but when you put it on the paper really quickly in the small space, which is not like intimidating as a whole sheet of paper, you can quickly assess if it's if it's work if it's working or not mm -hmm. because you see it. So yeah. It's just, and sometimes when you need to come up with something and you just don't know how to start, the smaller space is, the purpose of smaller space is to uh, encourage you to just put anything in it. Um, okay. uh, so I started browsing their uh, website and this just got my attention because Caroline told us that there should be no pattern backgrounds when you're trying to, uh, to show any icons or uh, numbers or any it almost looks like graphics. It almost looks like it's solar panels. Yeah, these are solar panels. What does that have to do with the World Wildlife Foundation? Solar panels. Uh, they, have, uh, they have different uh, strategic goals. Uh, wow. First one is the wildlife preservation, but there is also like um, sustainable food, preserving rivers, or so it's not anything with nature. Just wildlife. Yes. Oh, oh, okay. I assumed it was just wildlife. Yeah. I focused on what on wildlife okay. eventually. <laughs> and so it was actually, the reason for the long pattern is because it's distracting you. Yes. So just the, the one of the learnings was that the infographics should always have plain background. Um. Yeah. So. I focused on uh, the wildlife and eventually it turned out that the organization was not a very good choice because they don't count animals very often. <laughs> it's also very difficult to find any, any data even in their materials, their reports uh, about the animals. Like it's easy to find their financial reports and everything like that, but uh, not necessarily uh, the key statistics about animals. and. Uh, and yeah, and then they would also often say that, for example, uh, something increased by X percent, but they wouldn't say since when. Wow. So <laughs> it was kind of hard, but eventually I gathered some uh, some data, and yeah, and the whole purpose of this exercise is just to uh, put it on the piece of paper in the order that you will eventually want to present it to the audience. Did you find yourself moving the sticky notes around a lot? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I didn't <coughs> move the sticky notes, but uh, the next stage after you uh, put the sticky notes uh, on on the paper is to actually have a quick sketch of how this will eventually look like okay. if you take the data from the sticky notes. So I ended up mixing this part a lot. And this is my final infographic, and we will just have a look at it. Uh, bit by bit in Tableau because that's the whole purpose to build it in Tableau. <laughs> uh, so my focus was to really make it an uh, infographic. So I uh, like to have interactive For the presentation. Uh, yes. So um, I uh, I always like to do interactive dashboards. And I also know that people always make, uh, pay attention to tooltips, but I figured if this is uh, like infographic that goes online, this is irrelevant. So I cleared all the tooltips, and nothing is interactive in here. Um, yeah. So. So that was a bit of a new, a bit of a learning experience for you. Was how can you make something static that you because you're so used to yeah, making in things way. interactive? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Um, so this is uh, at the beginning we start with the uh, highlight of the fact that uh, there's a decrease in global wildlife from 1975-52% and the number one objective of WWF is to uh, save this wildlife and we have a success story uh, as a next um, set, segment and uh, we know that pandas are no longer endangered because they actually managed to increase their population so they are no longer classified as nice. endangered yeah. and uh, also the tigers have their first growth in the century and mm. With the green, uh, I've indicated that they plan to, like currently there are 4,000 tigers, but they uh, claim that if the donations keep coming from people, they will increase to 6,000 by 2022. And, and then we move on to section which is how they are going to do it. So I took their four, uh, four uh, objectives on not a objectives mm -hmm. for ways on how they want to do it and build uh, tiny icons for that and also I showed some uh, data saying that for example 51% of their income comes from individuals so it shows the reader how important the donation from individual person is 30% uh, of the uh, spending on their objectives like I mentioned rivers there are six objectives uh, goes for wildlife, so it's a huge focus for them. And also, for example, one of the ways that they want to work is catalyze technology innovation. So I've also uh, showed how many followers they have on social mm -hmm. media and that this infographic would go to social media. And call to action at the end, so donate Team Panda. So again, if the purpose of this is to go to social media, so hashtag is a nice. Yeah. Nice relation to the audience. Great layout. Uh, this is one that works really, again, you know, this one works really well in long form because you've, you've got the big questions for each section. They break it up really, really nice. So again, another good example of a beginning, a middle, and an end in a, in a graphic. You know, good use of a pie chart. Yeah. You know, it's very clear. I like how you highlighted the important segment of the the segment of the pie chart you want them to pay attention to. Yeah, so I kept the green theme across the things that right. I um, that are um, saving or are success. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. I like the font too. What font is that? Kali brief, my favorite. Yeah. Kali <laughs> That's supported on Tableau Public, so you're okay. Okay. Yeah. Any other feedback so I can improve it and post it online? Yeah, if I give a comment. No, go ahead. The only thing I would have changed here is I might flip your story a little bit because the first, by having the success up at the top, which I love having the success, but I'm I'm less tempted to scroll because I think, oh, you guys have solved this problem. Okay. So I'll go help the missing children or the, so, <laughs> so you may want to just flip that so it's, here's the problem, here's how we're going to solve it, and by the way, this actually works. Oh, and and now, so now you're already, I'm already committed to, hey, I, I'll, I'll help you do these things, and, and you can tell me, and your, your money's safe because it actually works. So just, just a minor uh, tweak on the story. Yeah, again, yeah so. that's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. So you would flip the panda tiger section at the bottom? Yeah, I would flip the, do the how next, and then, and then, then okay. kind of a headline on the panda tiger with yeah. this. This method, this this proven method works, right. so, or right. something that's like a, that. Yeah, that's, so, a, that's a really good idea. Yeah. Cool. Any other feedback? Anyone? I'm tired. Right. You guys aren't used to working at five days. Right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good job. Well done. Thank you. choose my charity, I really wanted to do something um, related to Parkinson's disease because uh, my dad has Parkinson's disease and it's something that um, 
I feel like could always use more awareness and more fundraising. So there's a couple, my problem, my first problem was I didn't know which charity to choose because there are so many mm -hmm. um, for such a sort of rare disease. There are a lot, a lot of different charities out there. Um, the one with the best information or the infographic that I found that I like the most is this one here that we're looking at now from the Michael J. Fox Foundation. And then the, I didn't want to just recreate this. Um, right. And also, you'll notice there's not a lot of actual data points. Um, the numbers, like one, one in a hundred over the age of sixty. But what is what does that really mean? Yeah. Um, it feels but, pretty cluttered. Too. It does. Yeah. Um, there's one million in the U.S. who suffer from Parkinson's. Five million worldwide. And then the rest of this. I mean, this isn't even strictly Parkinson's, but they're trying to make their point. This one was the most interesting to me that the most effective drug today for the disease was created in 1967. So I, I thought that that really screamed out to me like, wow, there is, there's actually a real need for research in this because right. if we haven't improved anything for surely, people. Surely science has moved on since then. Exactly. But I, I liked this and I didn't like it because there wasn't enough information and I, I didn't feel like there was a lot I could do with it. Uh, to, any, I wasn't going to create any charts in Tableau. I was just typing everything. Right. <laughs> and so I needed something that I could type. So my next idea was to go through what is Parkinson's, what are the stages? So there's five stages. Um, so I had I'd actually recreated something like this and was trying to fiddle around with getting the text. Um, I also looked at creating icons for this, for the stages. So you're shaking on one side, you're shaking on both sides, you're having a lot of trouble with your posture, and then unassisted walking, and the fifth stage is, is your bedroom. But these are really not attractive icons, and they're kind of grim, and it's, anyway, so I scrapped that idea as well. <laughs> um, but a lot of these, this was all on my sort of post-it notes, thinking through what Caroline had, had asked us to do, and these were all things that I just kind of ran through really quickly and realized weren't working for me, and, Aren't what I wanted to do. So um, I actually did wear, intentionally matched my t-shirt to my charity today. Oh, well done. Yeah, so I chose the Neon Parkinson's <laughs> Unity Walk, um, which is an annual walk to raise money for Parkinson's disease. Um, because they have corporate sponsors, it's a once year event, 100% of it goes to research which is great. It's also a big community day, so you have people come together from all over the U.S. and, and sometimes internationally to talk about their experiences. You have speakers, you have community booths. Um, and then at the bottom, you scroll down on their page, this is, they have their Instagram account and their tweets. Uh, oh, is it? Oh my yeah, god, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's me. <laughs> But, um, oh, funny. <laughs> so m what I chose to do, where, what I hate every single year, I do this walk and I raise money, and this is their fundraising page, and it, I think it's terrible. Um, they allow you to upload one photo, and you're allowed to change this text, and then this is taking up so much space, this doesn't really matter. It's, um, and I find myself having to write my, you know, the story of, of my dad's journey, um, or you could just use their standard text, which most people do, but I really wanted to make it personal if I'm sending it out to friends and family to try to get them yeah. to donate to also show like how how's my dad doing now, what um, what's his deal, what not. So I always look at this every year and I'm like, God, I wish I was better at web design. I you know I do something different or I do my own thing. So I tried to do that in Tableau, and that was was what I decided to do. So it's not an infographic; it's a better presentation of this fundraising website. So that was my aim. Um, and this is on Tableau Public now. Yep. Let me, I think it, you can see it better if I just present it this yeah, way. Yeah, that's better. Yep. Um, so we've got Parkinson's Unity Walk. That's the date this year. If anyone's in New York that weekend, you're welcome to join. A <laughs> uh, um, uh, little history quickly about what Parkinson's Unity Walk, the organization is. Um, basically what I just said to you guys about it's a community day once a year um, and then the fact that I'm walking to honor my dad who was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease over 20 years ago a little bit of history um, they have this whole bit 
um, and their website with the text that says they're a grassroots organization that started in 1994, and it's just, I didn't like that. I thought that was much easier visualized in the progress where they started in 1994 with $16,000 raised, and last year they raised $1.4 million. Uh, the other statistic, which I thought about putting in, was that they had 200 walkers their first year, and last year they had 9,000 mm. participants on the day. Um, and so I was able to use a time timeline chart, but these are actually, I think, shapes <laughs> um, of my dad's journey through Parkinson's from when he was diagnosed in 1994, which coincidentally was the year the walk began, but it's nothing to do with that. And then sort of how quickly, or, or not quickly, depending on how you're looking at it, things have progressed for him. Um, so being forced into retirement, having um, deep brain stimulation surgery to stop driving, and then from very quickly going to stage three where he can no longer, he's, that's in the, the walker stage. Um, and then now he requires assistance in every task and has hallucinations. So if I'm sending this to his friends, they're now like, oh, okay, well, that's why Jim doesn't call me anymore. Or now I understand um, why he's not speaking to me on the phone. Got my fundraising goal and the donate button, which skips my unattractive website and just takes you straight to the donation page. Oh, good idea. Yeah. Have they have they tweeted you back? Uh, yeah, they said you know, great. We you know we're, they take my comment every year about website <laughs> <laughs> about how I wish we I could do more. Again. We hear you, but <laughs> we really only want to provide one platform. Yeah, so yeah. you know, <laughs> we like what you've done here. Just use this. Yeah. Oh, great. Yeah. But that's that's about it. That's good. I th I think. That you put your dad's journey in there really adds a lot. It makes it much more emotional, I think. I was looking for a real. case study, yeah, yeah, type feel. And why not use your own case study? What know, tweak you might want to do with the, the timeline of your dad because it's different. He wants the spacing in between the lines to show you know, how the time. The time, right? I wonder if you could just do either a grayed out, like just behind the years, like a, a line with dots for each. Yeah, so oh right, so it's clear why it's spaced out because yeah. sometimes, oh, yeah, yeah. So Just it's so not it's like right. More like no, well, the the year then the line is like a tube line with the sure. distance between yeah, yeah. stops. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And then just so that it's clear, because it, otherwise it, you might not really, you know, not necessarily mm -hmm. put the two together, but it is an actual timeline. Yeah. So that right. was well done. I don't know. I, I struggle with all of this white space, and I felt like maybe I should make this text bigger, or I wanted to fill the white space, but based on everything Caroline said, it's just like, Let white space is okay. It's yeah. fine. Yeah. You don't have to fill it up. Yeah. 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 I really like how, you know, I think everybody is pretty much stuck to very simple color palettes and very few colors, which uh, is, it's really hard to do that, actually. It is. <laughs> I think the other thing that you could have done, you know, mm -hmm. you were saying about your, you wanted to do the bar chart with different stages. Yes. You could have done that on your timeline as well to show sort of what oh, stage. Oh, yeah, to show what stage you have. Yeah. Okay. So, like, do, like, a stacked bar maybe on the left-hand side. So I did show. think about doing that, but because of my dad's deep brain simulation, it kind of masked all the symptoms in stages two and three, so he just went from, like, one to four. So it, it would, you know, like if I was being true to his case study, but yeah. I could always just, you know, make all make it fit. Yeah. And yeah, have it be more informative about, about it. It's not it's only a minor thing, but you know, that bar chart you've got to get your goal. You could put it on like a glass or something, an like image around it, so you're trying to fill the bucket fill. Oh yeah, like I was thinking of with you know the like thermometer the type thing that they yeah, usually do. Yeah. 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 Just to, to show that you're you're you know trying to fill it up, you know. But, right, you know, to make it more clear that, yeah. Just be, just be careful, kind of make, I suppose it depends what you're doing. If you're doing the thermometer at work, like that sort of thing, but when you, when you come into doing those things, less infographic you just be careful, because obviously changing width things, for instance, can yeah. misrepresent the data, the data. And things like that. So, but in this scenario, you probably would have been all right. Probably would have been okay. But you're right, I mean, 
clean look of it, like of all of them, yeah. is often one of the hardest things to do. So the fact that everyone since I've been in here has been like that, yeah. it's really good. Right. If you go back to the, the first example, what did you say it was? Um, the, the Michael J. Fox oh, yeah, Foundation. Fox. That is really busy. It is, and it's hard to read the, the words. You also want to, I want to group together the blue things, but I don't think they have there, anything to do with no each relation, other. There's no relation, no. It's like they were just alternating colors. To yeah. Them. So they were made, so you can see that they were distinct, right? Yeah. But you naturally kind of group the things under the same color. Yeah. That would be better just with like two or three of those things. Obviously. Yeah. It yeah, would have been. Yeah. Good job. Well done. All right. Messed up with no scarf today. Everybody notice no scarf today. It's March. That's why I just change up. Come this spring. Oh, what is that desktop, Jamie? Uh, San, uh, San Francisco. No, that's the icon. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else. Everything else, oh. yeah. <laughs> it is what it is. Oh my god, that would drive me nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, it's his desktop. He can do what he wants. Do you want to talk about your charity first before you? First yeah, no, yeah. I would. Yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah, so pretty much, I went for UNICEF. So I, um, I went for the Fist for Social Good project on social media. So I, I knew the data was available there. So I kind of saved shortcut a few times beforehand. <laughs> not gonna lie, I, I knew the prod, I knew the data was available. So that's why I kind of used it as well. Uh, so basically. If I'd known you were cheating, I would have told you no. <laughs> I'm surprised that no one jumped at it, to be honest. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> so basically, the communication goals of the project, the project was kind of defined by, by Chloe Singh, who runs the project. So basically, the communication goals was to uh, use UNICEF's aims and objectives to create, a con to create content to highlight the child migration across the globe from 2005 to 2015, mm -hmm. uh, especially focusing on the uh, Middle East uh, war conflict. <laughs> so basically, it was. Uh, so, so the, a lot of the brief was already kind of written for yeah, you. So, yeah. Team and some yeah. of those, some of those goals were already there. Yeah. So the project was uh, to create an in-depth uh, dashboard or tableau story on the situation of refugees and migrant uh, migrant child mi migrant child children worldwide and in, or an in, interact, interact, interactive infographic that's based on this data. So that was already created for me. And then it was up to you how you designed it and how you went about creating it. Um, and then obviously I had to stay within the brand toolkit of uh, UNICEF's. So, so the mission of statements, taglines. So I had to try and create something similar to their branding, etc. And um, and also the photos were provided for me, so I had to just use that, those photos. I can use external photos from the web. And this is the data available for me to um, explore and uh, use, within, use within the infographic. So back to my infographic. So basically I just wanted to show just what I learned during the week on to uh... I think you're in edit mode here. Yeah, we just got a final close. Bingo. You can see that full screen mode as well. Upper right. So yeah, so pretty much I just wanted to show my um, week, uh, my process on how I designed the project. So basically I just wrote down the project names and used what uh, Caroline designed for us during the week. So pretty much it's been summed up beforehand anyway. So what was the message, the destination type demographics, what I'd used to aim, aim the uh, graphic towards so the general public.
any audience, audience was obviously the general public and hopefully the and it was used for social media was the main audience type and um, device I'd use. Um, and then I just went on to further just to create uh, to divide the page up within segments to create a pathway or storyboard to go onto Tableau and tell the story. So here's the dashboard. Do you have it in Tableau desktop as well? Okay. Yeah, but the videos will play. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So, <laughs> so pretty much I went for trying an eye catching, obviously top infographic there, really. use a use a title which was used within their brochure, and then just a catchy thirty one million children that live outside the country of their birth. So just a catchy um, figure using that, and then just obviously the UNICEF logo just down below. Uh, the next kind of segment I went on to describe the history of migration. So describing 30 million and our refugees and how it uh, how it's increased and over the over that uh, date period. So, so 50, what does the bars represent? Is those each a year? Or? So yeah, each year. Is that, is that 2015 at the top? Yeah, so it should. Okay. So is there a reason that you didn't flip that the other way and have it go left to right instead of top to bottom? Not really. I just okay. tried to. That's fine. Just so yeah. So yeah. So that was that. And then uh, this video obviously goes through the history of child migration of the showing the history of the migration. Then below, I went for tried to put some in, interactivity exp exploration within that. So just showing the migration, global migration flow. Of people throughout the world during that time, these time periods. So you can filter down through if you wanted to select Africa. Um, it would allow it to do that. So that show that's that's flow out of uh, Africa. Af or? The the continent of Africa there. Okay. Okay. And sure. then just out click that, and then obviously you have the option if you wanted to go to a specific country. So we have pick Syria. Yeah, that's why. So if you hover over the <coughs> view, select one, should give you. <laughs> should tell you the migration flow between the two countries. OK. Obviously not. So really, this would be, uh, so if you zoom, can you hit, uh, on, on the map, can yeah. you hit the little search icon there? And just type in Europe. It's not allowed. No, it's not allowed. No, it should allow you to, okay, what if you just hit the, uh, hit the locate me icon thing there? Yes, what? No, to the right of the search box. Yeah. Is it not? No. That's weird. Okay. So yeah, that's that was the aim. I just be, be need to see Syria just in Europe. Yeah, no, that's. Or actually, you could click on Europe and filter it then, right? So what was the reason for having everything on the map, all the migrations and oh, Because it's just really classic. Um, just to give an overview perspective of the overall migration. Yeah, really busy. Yeah. So you're trying to show volume on that? Yeah, show volume, okay. yeah, but also it's just a default position as well. So, okay. so yeah, that was... Okay, so we get how yeah, that Yeah, so basically, just as another infographic of problems declining every day and why, and obviously I went further down to see the arms race for child safety, so obviously the armed conflict uh, pathway within the story. To showing 73% of the child refugees currently come from the top 10 conflict-torn countries in the last decade. 
so talking about Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, yeah. South Sudan, yeah. Pakistan. So that was just a nice little summary there, to be honest. Yeah. And then I just gave some context for the what the charity does. So just the numbers behind the children. Gave a little video there. And then what does UNICEF uh, do for the do for the children? What what does it look to provide for the children? So for example, safe and a sustainable lead global pathway for migration must be established. And they're the kind of three key uh, things they look for. And then just go down to the bottom. If you wanted to take action now, you could just click on and it just takes you to the uh, page. So yeah, that was, yeah, that's. Good, I like, again, it's another, you know, minimal use of color, very, very kind of clean. Uh, the dividers break it up in nice, I like how you use the dividers to break it up into sections and, and yeah. stuff. The only thing I would probably change up, the, I didn't get that that was over time, but I sort of did with your, okay. yeah. with your, uh, with your descript when you were talking about it, but I, was going to I think it'd be better if it was flipped the other way, or you have to use just but it's backwards scale as well. Yeah, so, so yeah, that's if you want to, to me it looks like it's decreasing the way the charts built. It says it's increasing because it goes from top to bottom. So, I think it is misleading a bit because also further down so it's exactly the yeah, problems the decreasing, problems declining. declining, I should say the problem's growing, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Oh yeah, no, it's just a different word choice. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so pretty much the map should have it works. <laughs> there you go. Just uh, give some okay. how it worked. So if I go, I you're, yeah, hit the little pin on your map because you're uh, if you're accidentally clicking in your map, it's it's making it okay. unpin your map there. So there you go. <laughs> that's the, that was the idea behind it. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Gotcha. Nice. Yeah, no. Did you uh, did you suss the how many you posted about wanting to? Yeah, no. So pretty much my play a video with this in a semi-circle shape. No, I can. Okay. So pretty much the idea was to try and get something similar to the map there. If you can see that. Yeah. See the kind of curve. That was the idea. Embed the video within there. Yeah. I can quite get it right. So. Yeah, I think you so, need a transparent yeah. sheet for that, which Tableau doesn't do this yet. No, that's why I was trying to achieve that. But your, your text is like on a background image, so is that an image you created somewhere elsewhere? Like the text isn't in, done in Tableau, right? Because obviously you wouldn't be able to overlay it on the, on the, on the photograph. Floating. Well, the text box is text box and floating. Oh, can they? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But not sheets. Right, right, okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So, the only way I think of doing your video thing is to purely do it in like Premiere or something, so you, do, you would create the the arch effect. Yeah, that's yeah. Sort of black I, There's no way of doing it in Tableau. Yeah, no, it's, it's that's the. It's tried over engineering it as well. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah, it, it will for what benefit, it, yeah, it for what it was, yeah. Yeah, benefit, so I'd spent yeah. 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 yeah, I spent a couple of hours on it. I thought. Well, it's functionally you have a, a PNG that's kind of that bit with that sort of built in, and then overlay that over the yeah, video. Yeah. So just layer up so the video that's on the bottom layer, the PNG yeah. on top. Yeah, there's um, there's an image. And you get transparency and then it would bring it into town. Yeah, if you upload to the NG, then you have a reference. Right. Give you like a mask. Yeah, I just couldn't find a shape of the PNG which gave that. Right, yeah, yeah, you probably have to make your own. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, right. I noticed that it seemed to take quite a bit of time to load on server. Um, what one handy tip there is like this, the images are great, but you should always check the size of them. Yeah, uh, one or two didn't. Fit properly yeah. on a float object, so I had to make them bigger to actually fit within the certain segments. Yeah, just check so, the file size on those because yeah. sometimes you know you download a picture from the internet and put it into your into your tableau viz. And I've had this before, and it's 24 megabytes, you know, super high res image, and so yeah, yeah, my no. viz is taking forever to load. Um, yeah. What's that? Alright, anything else? Any feedback? Oh. Well, I've got, yeah. All right, well done. Yeah, no, Good job. Yeah, no All right, that's it for this week.